Okay, we're in section 4.4 now. Um, a new postulate. Postulate 19, the side-side-side congruence postulate. Um, you can actually abbreviate this one just by saying that. <laughs> um, so this one says, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two, two triangles are congruent. Where in section 4.3, we learned that, actually it's in 4.2, I'm sorry, let me get the exact statement. We learned if two con in two congruent figures, if all the parts of one figure are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other figure, then they are congruent. So now we're trying to simplify and trying to prove that pieces are congruent with less information. So today we're just going to say side, side, side. So we'll start out. Okay, if side AB is congruent to RS, those are segments, and side BC is congruent to ST, and side CA is congruent to TR. See that side, side, side. Then we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle RST. I apologize, I forgot the music was still playing. Let me turn that off. Sorry about that. So really, side, side, side just says if all the three sides are congruent to the other three sides, then the triangles are congruent. So write a proof. Um, the proofs here are pretty simple. So given that two, a side is congruent to a side and another side is congruent to a side, we're trying to prove that triangle KLM is congruent to triangle NLM. So our first things are the given. KL is congruent to NL and KM is congruent to NM. And those are all segments. And our reason is given. Sorry, that should be a one. I always do that. And I sometimes catch it. Alright, we can also say that LM is congruent to LM. But if we look, it's right here. And I've always, I usually put three tick marks for that just to show me that that third side is congruent to the third side. And my reason here is the reflexive property of congruence. So now we know that triangle KLM is congruent to triangle NLM because of side, side, side. Okay, that's all we need to say is side, side, side. You could also say postulate 19, but that's harder to remember than side, side, side. All right, moving on. Okay, you try. Decide whether the congruent statement is true. Explain your reasoning. Push pause. Pretty simple. We know that sides congruent to side, sides congruent to side, sides congruent to sides. So yes, they're congruent because side, side, side. You do need to make sure that everything is in the right order. D, F, G, D, F, G goes H, J, K. Okay, you try again. Push pause. Okay, for this one, the answer is no because all the corresponding um, sides aren't congruent to the other corresponding sides. In particular, AB isn't congruent to CD, and if you see AB are the first and last, CD are the first and last, those need to be congruent and they're not. Decide whether the congruent statement's true, explain your reasoning. Again, push pause and check it out. Not too difficult. Yes, side, 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 double check. QPT, QPT is two ticks, three ticks, one tick. RST, two ticks, three ticks, one tick. All right, another example. Um, which of the coordinate, coordinates of the vertices of a triangle are congruent to triangle PQR? Okay, by counting, we know that PQ is 4, and QR is 3, and we can figure out what PR is. Yes, that is the distance formula. Stop whining. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, 
the number, the coordinates we're going to calculate it are negative 1, 1, that's R, and 1, 2, 3, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, 4. So x minus x will do negative 5 minus negative 1 squared plus y minus y. Okay, I'm going to push pause and finish it. I made a mistake, so I'm pushing play again so I can show you how to fix it. This coordinate right here is wrong, and I can't erase it. We're going to go over it in red. This should be a 1. Okay, so um, y minus y is wrong. This should be a 1. This should be a 3. That should be a 9. So the square root of 25, which is 5. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. So that length is 5. So let's look at our, all of our options. So we're looking for any triangle with side lengths 3, 4, and 5. Um, if we look at A, the distance from um, negative 1, 1 to negative 1, 5 is 4. The distance from negative 1, 5 to negative 5, 4 is 3. And the distance from negative 1, 1 to negative 4, 5 is 5. How did we get lucky enough that A would be the right answer? That's crazy. Um, I would probably plot this to make it easier. And just to do a really basic sketch, um, we can do it right there. So negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that distance was 4. Okay, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 5. And this distance was 3. And this is the one you'd have to do the distance formula on to get 5. So I would. I would plot this and um, just double check rather than do the distance formula on all of them. And remember, another thing you can do here, if it's a right triangle and you know that this is a right triangle, you know that this is a right triangle, is to do Pythagorean theorem. It's somewhat easier. I mean, it's the same thing as the distance formula. Um, but it's just not as much labor intensive. It's not as labor intensive as the distance formula. Okay, you try. JKL has those vertices, RST has those vertices. Graph the triangles in the same coordinate plane and show that they are congruent. I'm going to push pause and do a rough sketch. There we go. Um, looks good to me. I think we have all the same sides, so yes, because of side, side, side and my work is um, showing that they are congruent. Okay, another one. Structural support. Explain why the bench with the diagonal support is stable while the one without the support can collapse. Okay, so here I have the diagonal support and here I do not. If I think about this one, um, once those nails get loose, this thing could wiggle from side to side. If you think about it, just if these guys were wiggling back and forth, it could just collapse and they could topple over, which honestly could be quite funny, but sad if they got hurt, right? Um, but the bench with a diagonal support forms triangles. One, two triangles with fixed side lengths, okay? So this diagonal means that I have two triangles with fixed lengths and the triangles cannot change shape. So the bench is stable. This diagonal right here allows for the triangles not to change shape. So the bench is stable. So basically a diagonal support um, a diagonal support gives stability. No diagonal support means that your shape is not stable because there are many possible quadrilaterals with the given side lengths. You know, as I move this thing 
left and right. Um, I have many different shapes that all have the same side lengths. The diagonal um, makes it a fixed, um, fixed shape and it cannot change into any other quadrilaterals. So the diagonal support is what you're looking for. Oh, we just did that. So go ahead and read through it. And then push, pause and read through it, and then move forward. All right, determine whether the figure is stable. Explain why. Okay, I'll do this one with you. Not stable. Why, you may ask? Because there is no diagonal support. If you think, I can move this back and forth. All these sides would stay the same length, but I can move it. I can make a rhombus. I can make a really flat rhombus where all of those sides are the same length, but my quadrilateral changes. How about this one? Yes, it is stable because I have a diagonal and all of my pieces are... Um, supported. Nothing can change shape. How about this one? Not stable, because if we look between this vertice and this vertice, I don't have any support. So, in essence, this can move. Okay, if you remember those metal eyelet things, you know, that you would open up, push through paper, and then, you know, they would get flat like this. Imagine those in these little holes. And then um, you could change all those shapes. You know, if that was right here, that means this would all be wiggly. Okay, you could swing it back and forth. Okay, your daily homework quiz. Okay, go ahead and try it, and we'll check answers tomorrow. And again, last question. Go ahead and try it, and we'll check answers tomorrow. Good job.